Star Citizen is in the middle of the biggest sale of the year, and their multi-thousand dollar spaceships are selling out in seconds. Cloud Imperium Games' funding machine is showing no signs of slowing down, and they seem to be well on course to break $100 million in funding this year alone. Will Star Citizen raise over a billion dollars in funding before the multiplayer game is out? Honestly, at this point, it seems pretty likely. Now, because Star Citizen is a mostly open development game, we have real-time access to most of its funding, and we can even track how the game has funded in the past. And looking at the data, what you'll notice right away is that Star Citizen's funding is not slowing down. In fact, it's actually speeding up. In 2022, we saw a freakishly large boost in pledges for the game, growing the total players by nearly a million and topping out at around $113 million more funds raised. And at least for a while, it looked like 2022 might be an impossible figure to match. However, the ongoing sale is raking in tons of dough thanks to the new ship announcements and the giant ship sales where the biggest, craziest, most expensive ships are selling out in seconds. The most expensive ship being a $2,700 Javelin Destroyer. Now, I know that that figure sounds crazy, and honestly, it is. Those ships are reserved for the whales, players who have decided to drop silly amounts of money on growing their space fleets. However, the average Star Citizen player has bought in for a much, much lower price. With about $630 million raised so far and 4.9 million paying backers, the average price per player is around $128. And knowing that the funding for this game is also heavily lopsided towards the whales, it means that the majority of people have probably spent considerably less than $128 on the game, while the whales spend thousands to make up the difference. But of course, one of the best ways to keep the money rolling in is to bring in new players regularly, and with the promising Squadron 40 to trailer and citizen con presentations kind of making the rounds on the internet this year star citizen seems like it's comfortably raking in those new pledge dollars and of course speaking as somebody who wants to see star citizen succeed and achieve all of its insane goals this is of course a good thing especially since there was a time in which players thought star citizen might actually collapse in on itself in 2017 and some of the surrounding years there was a lot of fud in the air that's fear and uncertainty and doubt. This was caused by many different stories and allegations surrounding the company, but one was documents showing CIG taking out a loan for the company. Now, I don't really want to get into all the details surrounding all the drama around CIG during these times, but it was basically a nest of accusations and interpretations that make it pretty hard to get any real concrete information from. But nonetheless, even I was scared that CIG might be in a bit of a pickle as the company was entering a period of major content drought and deadline missing. And of course, once CIG starts to miss the deadlines, the rumor mill kicks into gear. However, in 2019 and beyond, CIG kicked their funding into overdrive, more than doubling the yearly average that they were making from 2013 to 2018. A lot of this is due to the game hitting major milestones and providing a lot of tech that was previously only theoretical. Basically, they were beginning to prove their game concept and actually make a game that was fun to play. And also, of course, continuing to produce tons of extremely cool spaceships that players could buy with their cold, hard cash. And continuing to do so consistently, this year's International Aerospace Expo introduced a new alien ship that is quite frankly stunning in its design and a lot of fun to fly. The idea of flying around the verse in a ship that you call home is extremely appealing to many players, and the new Sulin from Gatak is a ship that can do exactly that, but with alien flair that many players have been craving. CIG's funding since the start of IIE has gone up extremely fast, and it will be interesting to see if it can get close to breaking last year's record. The International Aerospace Expo event is dropping trailers and ships like crazy. Their new Garmin Humble security professional videos have been quite entertaining. These little trailers generally serve as hype for upcoming features and gameplay stuff, and his character kind of assumes the role of somebody who might enjoy the security branch of missions in Star Citizen, which involve detaining or putting down the local riffraff. 
though his character is sort of a comedic take on somebody taking themselves a little too seriously, giving the kind of advice you might expect from, say, a Steven Seagal self-defense video. It's mostly nonsense, but quite entertaining, and it also shows maybe a little peek about the next phase of bounty hunting and bringing in targets alive. CIG has been teasing tier two bounty hunting for a while, which will be the alive part of the bringing them in dead or alive missions, and using new cryopods to stow criminals on bounty ready ships. Many players are excited about this prospect as it brings a more hands-on element to bounty missions versus just go somewhere and kill a target. Now, CIG isn't leaving players with just one new ship. The Spirit C1 cargo ship is out as well. It's a bit less exotic than the Sulin, but it fills an incredibly important role of a two-seat ship that can haul and fight its way around missions and gameplay. It seems like two and three player ships are going to be some of the most popular ships in the game, and CIG is starting to figure that out as they focus on more ships in this market with the recently announced and of course buyable or at least concept buyable Zeus Mark II. They also just launched the Argo SRV which is debuting ship tractor beams. And while the SRV itself doesn't really have much of a gameplay loop at the moment, other ships have gotten access to their tractor beams which have shown to be great for loading and unloading cargo from your ship without actually having to leave the ship. Plus there's also likely more concept sales on the way in the coming week with the RSI mining ship that's sort of been leaked or teased. And players are going to continue to get more opportunities to buy the massive ships in the game like the Kraken, which is essentially a flying aircraft carrier slash mobile base. And on top of all of these sales, the game is also barreling towards another patch, patch 3.22 with a tentative launch before the end of the year, which will bring new derelict settlements and gameplay locations to Stanton, along with even more ships like the Santakyai Medium Fighter built with alien tech and another hover bike from Origin plus the first iteration of the player hair update that was shown off at CitizenCon. And this would basically mark one of the first main features from CitizenCon coming into the game. One down, like 30 to go in the next 12 months, according to their hopeful timeline anyway. And with the faster than normal progress that Star Citizen is making lately, it seems like the funding will scale with the hype and features as well. I'm of course curious to see if when Squadron 42 finally releases, whether or not they're going to count those sales profits as part of the game's funding or allow players to see the actual revenue generated from sales. I think they should actually keep all of those sales figures open to give players some insight as we are technically funding the whole game and they've already counted pre-release sales of Squadron 42 towards the funding goals. And if Squadron 42 releases next year, which many people are predicting it could, it would be a major boost to CIG's revenue, which is already incredibly impressive on its own. Now, 2023 isn't over yet, but it does seem to be pushing Star Citizen into a new year that's primed for massive developments and even more money to be made. This game is currently into its 11th year of full development and shows no signs of slowing down in terms of player interest and of course money coming in. Let me know in the comments if you think Star Citizen is going to break a billion dollars in funding someday and also what you think we're going to see first in 2024. And if you enjoyed this content don't forget to give me a like, hit that sub button, and of course tap the notification bell to beat that YouTube algorithm with me. Up next check out this video showcasing all of the promised upcoming features for spaceships in Star Citizen. It's pretty freaking massive. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.